All right. Well, thanks very much for uh, joining us. Um, and inviting us actually. And so I have a great panel here today. We'll dive right into it since we're running a little bit late. Um, joining me here this morning is uh, Alcino Labrador, who is general manager at Altif Labs. Uh, we also have Sultan Mahmoud, who's the healthcare director at BT Enterprise, uh, I think. And we have Joanne O'Brien, who is VP of digital ecosystems at um, TM Forum. So moving on from the last conversation, we heard a lot about um, sort of how do you roll out a 5G network effectively. Uh, we're now moving on to thinking about, well, what are these networks for? What are the outcomes they're gonna deliver for the customers that telecoms operators are working for? And you know, I think that one of the questions is, is how important is 5G really? Um, I just want to double double check, Annie, that it doesn't look like we have Sultan with us, but is he here? Hello, so you're looking for? Sultan Mahmoud from BT. Uh, I don't know. Sultan, if you're with us, please, can you turn your camera on? Well, I think while we wait, we'll uh, start introducing the other panelists. On, Amy. And yeah, of course. I mean, I will, I will anyway. Hopefully, Sultan will join us in a bit. But in the meantime, I'd like just to start off by getting um, uh, Alcino and Joanne to introduce themselves. So uh, maybe, Alcino, if you can start and, and share with us a little bit about um, your role and how that touches on the healthcare space. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for this invitation. Uh, my name is Alcino Lavardor, and I am the general manager for Altis Labs, the R&D and Technological Development Center of Altis Group. Uh, at Altis Labs, we have been developing a health solution for years and uh, that Altis operation are delivering to customers. So this is my connection to e -Health. We are developing solution for uh, our customer, let's say. Fantastic. We'll look, look forward to diving into some of the details of what those solutions are. Uh, Joanne, please, could you introduce yourself? Good evening. Hello, everybody. Uh, Joanne O'Brien here, uh, Head of Digital Ecosystems and Beyond Connectivity at TM Forum. Um, so my role at TM Forum is very much around working with our members on building their strategy for uh, diversification of the business beyond connectivity, but including um, how the future of connectivity can be consumed. As part of that, we've done a lot of research in a small number of, of vertical areas, um, healthcare being one of them, published a number of reports, but also we, we do more practical activities than that as well. You know, we uh, are part of the network of networks with the WHO. You know, we've built up relationships between the telecommunications industry and the healthcare industry to understand their needs um, and challenges going forward. Um, so we have a, a, a good view not just in say um, Western Europe and, and, and the like, but also right into what are the different challenges in different regions in the globe. Okay, fantastic, excellent. So, I mean, I, I think that, the, you know, the big question that, that, we're, that we have here is what's the role of 5G in healthcare? And uh, so I, I wanna put that to you guys, maybe I'll see, you, know, you you can go first, you're okay. in the midst of developing solutions. To what degree is, 5G featuring in those solutions today? And maybe where do you think it could feature if it's not? Okay, so in my belief, uh, um, 5G will bring a set of feature that will, will disrupt healthcare. Uh, and these feature are low latency, enhanced reliability, higher throughput and increased density, meaning uh, the number of connected devices per unit area. So altogether, they will bring better care and unlock more insights into day-to-day -day health of patients. Um, of course, we can add sensors and virtual reality to teleconferencing, for example, enabling remote monitoring of vital things, uh, signals during calls. Uh, and there are a couple of challenges we face today that I, I think 5G can solve uh, based on these uh, um, features. Uh, telemedicine for real-time diagnosis uh, requires real-time high-quality video uh, that we can provide uh, with 5G. Uh, uh, quickly transmit large imaging files for specialist review uh, mm -hmm. with poor network performance means more waiting time, less patients. 
And uh, high speed uh, 5G network means uh, quick and uh, reliably transport of huge data files. Uh, and for example, for mobile devices, this is uh, uh, mm -hmm. required. And uh, with 5G, we can support uh, in a more, uh, let's say, realistic, uh, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality, an immersive technology that can be uh, used on, in rehabilitation, uh, providing calming and distracting con uh, content. So mm. um, we can go uh, further, but <laughs> yeah. these are the... <laughs> but no, that's a, that's a great starting point. And just to dive in and clarify a little bit. So when you're talking about the big data file transfer, is that in between different healthcare providers or is it a patient to provider kind of relationship that you're thinking I'm of? Yeah, I, I'm thinking in a, in a patient to provider, but of course, uh, well, that's one of the challenges healthcare uh, today is facing, and this is the most uh, challenging one: is the, the interoperability between uh, between the, the the for example the public and the, and the private sector, and uh, well, this is something yeah. that it's not for 5G to solve, but. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. Well, I think that we'll dive into sort of the broader context in a little bit. Let's stick on 5G for now. The, the, the other question that I had is, okay, this idea of, you know, immersive solutions in order to help people. I've heard about things like um, using immersive solutions for, I think, like physiotherapy or, um, I don't know, treating anxiety and that kind of stuff. Like how, I mean, what's, what's your guess on the timeline for that? And, you know, in, is it really 5G that's hindering the adoption of that, or is it something else that's hindering the adoption? Well, uh, of course, 5G will will help, and uh, but for this, we'll uh, need uh, 5G in full capacity. And uh, we know from from the previous generation that uh, this is a, a let's say a, a graduation uh, evolution or gradative evolution. Uh, for 4G, it was the case, and uh, I don't see. Uh, let's say the full potential of 5G um, before uh, 2025, for example, because uh, um, we'll start with the new radio, but yeah. the, the huge, the huge change will be in the core of the network, in the qualification, in the softwareization, yeah. and all the, this uh, this transformation. So it would be, uh, let's say, a, a way uh, to go and uh, for many years, for okay. sure. Okay, great. So, Joanne, from your perspective, are you, you know, would you agree with Alcino that it's kind of a five-year timeline before we really start to see 5G's impact on healthcare? Um, I guess so. I mean, it partially because it's not about 5G really for, for the healthcare. It'll always be, it'll never be about the technology as such for, for the health community. Um, the the Technology like 5G will be the icing on the cake, the enabler that will allow things to scale, go better and things like that. So there's there's health is going undergoing its own massive transformation. And it's really for us as an industry to understand their challenges and help design solutions that will enable them to um, get over the barriers that that they have in their in their in their in, in their organizations, in their their whole community. Um, some of these are, are really, you know, the, the big sway in, in the Western world is very much about enabling patients to manage their own healthcare. And everything that um, Alicio has mentioned are, are features that will help citizens to manage their own healthcare in the, in the, in the future. And the 5G capabilities, which will, um, you know, which will enable large scale IoT and data management and things like that. These are all big, big things that will certainly help. I do think you're at least, you know, you are really into the five year time frame, partially because of, you know, there's so much uh, uh, regulatory concerns. There's so much, um, there, there's just, it is, a, it is a very, very complex space. There's huge silos of, of, of um, information. And I think the telecommunications community certainly have, have a lot to offer that can help in the transformation of healthcare. And 5G is just, is one of many aspects that can help with that. Mm. So kind of that, scaling back a little bit or towards the beginning of what you were saying is that, you know, what telecoms operators should really do is try and understand the challenges 
that the industry is going through and how they can help. So I don't know if you have some examples of, of telecoms operators you've worked with that, that maybe you feel have done a really good job of understanding that healthcare challenge and you know what practical steps ha did they take in order to, to, to yeah. do a good job of that? So the ones that are doing a particularly good job, right, you know, you have TELUS in, in Canada, Orange in, in Europe, um, BT obviously are, are, are on their own journey as well. In Middle East, we have STC, we have TELUS and Telstra, um, Southeast Asia and Australia. So they've all recognised that 5G is a, is a good thing in the future for building up um, a, a good business in the healthcare space and that they have a lot of capabilities that they can offer, but they've not started there. They've started with um, essentially business efficiency, health data flow, um, enabling patients to manage data, enabling uh, hospitals to manage data better. So bringing the capabilities from telecommunications like large scale asset management, large scale data governance, large scale business efficiency, bringing these types of capabilities first and recognizing that 5G really is the upswing for them. So, you know, building on the trusted relationship and getting in there. In the most cases as well, they're starting through a, uh, some form of uh, merger and acquisitions, sweeping up small companies to help them build up that business. Um, and it is working. You know, we've we've got good evidence that, say, um, particularly in TELUS and Telstra's case, that um, they're, they're in a profitable position. They're in a very strong position. Great. Excellent. Thank you very much, Joanne. So I see, Sultan, you've managed to join us. Wonderful to have you. Uh, good to be here. I've been I've been sitting around at uh, a me. I joined uh, the link that you sent and it's been endless, interesting presentations. But I just realized this can't be it, you know, Sultan. This could be something completely different. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you finally made it. You know, we're still we're still kind of in our opening uh, discussion where we're we're trying to, to figure out sort of where can 5G add value in in healthcare or maybe where it doesn't. And I, I know you have some opinions on this, Sultan. So maybe you can start with a brief intro to yourself and then give your two cents on on you know what you think the, the value of 5G is going to be in healthcare and maybe how soon you think it's going to emerge. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try. I, I'm, I slight, feel slightly like an imposter given the kind of panelists here, but I'll give it. I'll give you my perspective. So I'm Professor Sultan Mahmood, um, Director of Healthcare at BT uh, Enterprise, as part of the BT Group, and my. Uh, and I've recently joined. I've been here about six months um, after a kind of twenty two years in the NHS kind of working mm. in digitization, care delivery, um, commercial partnerships with uh, uh, with technology providers, um, regulation. So pretty much most parts of the NHS I've, I've touched. And uh, technology is a really interesting, um, interesting proposition. 5G, we've been hearing about it for a long, long time, actually. And uh, and, and a lot of the questions from the service is what is it beyond latency? What is the what is the hype about? And, and, and as we know, um, healthcare delivery is facing quite a lot of problems. So post pandemic, the good part of um, the pandemic is, and you've got to find positives, is that, you know, a huge amount of technology was used during the crisis. Yeah, kind of so the number of video consultations were kind of rocketing. Um, people were finding ways to get, get to the patient on a remote basis and things like kind of 5G connected ambulances for a small cohort of the population were were quite helpful in that. Um, we, we know things like wireless endoscopies, um, given the waiting list, could, could ask real value given the 5G linkages. However, um, I think the, there is a lot of promise of 5G, Amy, mm -hmm. yeah? um, without, the actual, without the actual real evidence-based kind of test cases to kind of back up, uh, back up the, the, the hype, if you like. That's my yeah. initial take on it. It's a very difficult area for kind of telco because to kind of monetize this, it's something that we're, you know, we're upgrading to a kind of unified network middle of the middle of the uh, decade. And, and, and a lot of the telcos are promising even better coverage. Um, but I think the main issue with 5G and generally technology per se is the kind of workflow of the clini clinical bodies. Mm -hmm. And not enough thought in my personal opinion is given to kind of how this may or may not impact workflow. So for yeah. example, you can put a 5G ambulance in and kind of put a HD high resolution camera, yeah? And kind of monitor the patient. And, and we've done that. We've done that with a couple of trusts, notably UHB. 
what's the evidence saying in terms of the kind of the the fidelity of the of the image and the haptic kind of feedback to make sure that that experience adds value what does it add above and beyond a clinician ringing another clinician saying i'm feeling this what do you reckon yeah because that might be yeah yeah so that's 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 kind of um my lived in experience um but incredibly i think i think 5g in a suite of other programs of work in terms of kind of things like diagnostics being a major blockage in, and, and stages of treatment well if you were to apply five, the benefits of 5g latency around kind of unified cloud networks and, and can make sure the data is secure you can really start to unleash the power of data which is where healthcare yeah, should absolutely go so that's a, yeah. a round robin kind of if you like kind of um, subjective view on, on, on life from an energy. Right. Well, I mean, I, th I think that your subjective view is very well informed, so we're happy to have it and, and great, great to get to know you a little bit there. So before we dive on to, you know, you guys have all articulated this, that 5G is just part of the solution. I just want to quickly feel whether, you know, one of the areas that's been talked about with 5G in healthcare is private networks, you know, particularly in hospitals. Um, so I don't know, you know, Alcino, is this something that you're, you're seeing at all as an opportunity? Or that yeah, so, you know customers are asking for yeah yeah i think it's uh, an opportunity but uh, as i told you uh, uh, my belief is it will take uh, a couple of years to uh, to have this um, let's say okay opportunity to take in. but first I, I i would like to say that the health sector is one of the least digitized sectors in the world and uh, this has to be basic uh, to uh, for us to to include the 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 features and the the advantage 5G can bring. So we can mm. we can all have all these feature low latency, uh, high capacity, and so on for for 5G. But if the the sector is not digitalized, it's not possible to to bring a real value. So I yeah. think the, the 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 big opportunity for for uh, telecom operators is uh, helping the sector to be digitalized. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, introducing new technology applications and potential service to improve efficiency uh, yeah. more, more, more than, than, than ever. And secondly, the, the lack of capacities uh, goes in tandem with the lack of a technology and uh, IT expertise in the healthcare sector. Uh, therefore, the sector as a whole is aware of the need to acquire uh, partners with strong technological the capacities to provide into end service to healthcare providers and telcos have many assets to attack the, the this market mm -hmm. the first advantage for operators is generally to have a large and qualified local workforce so they can uh, be regional uh, can work directly with healthcare providers uh, developing customized end to end solutions and train cl clinicians to use and manage them and the second advantage for operators is to be strongly regulated by their uh, respective local authorities. And uh, one of the key issues in healthcare is the perception of data reliability, security and privacy. So uh, in addition, it gives uh, telecom operators a rare advantage over GAFAs, which are often criticized or misperceived in terms of uh, data security. And finally, because of their history, size, technical expertise, and links with governance and regulatory bodies, telecom operators uh, can offer healthcare providers a high level of trust and a guarantee of sustainability. I think these are the advantages telecom operators have over other players, uh, and, and they can take the advantage of uh, digitalizing other sectors and bring this experience to the healthcare sector as well. Okay, so I'm hearing, you know, private 5G is kind of like the rest of it. It's There's a lot more basic stuff to do before the, the sector can even make yeah. use of it. And it's really about finding the tools for greater efficiency, data interoperability, um, improving workflows. So- Yeah, but the 5G will, will have, will play a, a key role and will disrupt the, the healthcare sector. My belief is that yeah. is this one, but there's a path to, to, uh, to go before, before this happens. Mm -hmm. So right. Sultan, yeah, I mean, I'd like to understand from you, Sultan, what do you see as, you know, the first port of entry or the low hanging fruit for a telecoms operator, you know, playing in the healthcare industry? You know, what's the, what's the first problems that telecoms operators should aim to solve 
for their healthcare customers. And, you know, obviously there's a connectivity element, but, you know, in terms of these efficiency tools, you know, which, which ones would you target first? I think the first thing, I think to, to go back to what my colleague was saying, uh, I'll, I'll you know, uh, I think that there is a base level of infrastructure requirements needed um, within within the, the health sector. So the NHS, as you know, um, is constantly in the media, um, huge amounts of pressures. And to, to kind of focus the conversation into let's kind of get the right level of funding for an infrastructure build for a kind of health economy is quite a difficult thing, given that finances are tight. So, you know, future ready infrastructure, as we call it in BT, is a, is a really important uh, enabler. So. Um, what are, what, are the net, what are the private networks needed within the kind of health economy on a hospital basis, primary care basis, secondary uh, mental health trust? Uh, what's the kind of uh, the, the bill requirements? Mm -hmm. And again, there are frameworks in place at the moment, such as the kind of the HIMSS uh, levels, which kind of some organizations uh, use uh, as a guide, but they're not ubiquitous and, and there is not a uniform uh, set of um, practices that happen. Um, from a central government, given it's a heavily regulated kind of sector, um, there's a push and a pull. So the, the, the government can put the kind of guardrails around what does kind of better uh, infrastructure look like. But it's down to constituent, if you like, buyers and customers in terms of large hospital groups and commissioning organisations to kind of make that happen. But as you know, there are conflicting uh, priorities because, you know, are you going to, if, if your network is good enough to see the patients you're seeing now, yeah, just about, can you take that money away and build a new kind of um, infrastructure when you've got a cancer center to build or, or, or a suite of MRI um, uh, uh, diagnostic equipment to put in? It's, it's catch yeah. 22 situation. So additional funding is needed. So, so the, what, the beat, what the telcos can do of this world, and certainly this is what we're doing with, with a, you know, we've got a hundred odd customers, uh, large customers within the NHS and, you know, um, uh, and, and lots of history with the NHS, both good and, and kind of questionable. <laughs> Right. Um, what we're doing is trying to um, co-create with them in terms of what are, what is the needs of your infrastructure. So if you want to kind of move to kind of secure private network so you can leverage the power of IoT uh, and other things, what's needed? And again, some of the people know the questions to even think about and some people don't. So that educational space, I suppose, is themed too. So yeah. telcos, because of the expertise, as my colleague has said, we have a lot of track record kind of digitizing other sectors our expertise we need to bring to bear and co-create with um the health sector okay. again to kind of absolutely start asking the right questions and start to kind of set out well this is a, a blueprint at that point in time then you can go to the treasury and say well hold on you know we want to do x y and z and the national you know the nhs plan states this in terms of digitization to enable us to do that we have done a quite a lot of detailed work and this is what we need so it's that I think telcos can do that, and I think telcos are doing that. Certainly, yeah. the, the approach at BT is co-creation, not only of the really sexy, clever stuff, and, and we have lots of stuff, you know, so AI-driven um, tools to kind of look at robotic process automation in, in the hospital back office, but also frontline tools to kind of um, manage patients remotely through kind of um, remote monitoring packs that we've kind of sent out to different parts of the country, which are, yeah. which are working well. But there, if you like, just playing at the edges. Yeah. yeah. Then there's the whole interoperability inter inter issue. Is so that I, I'm going to stop I'll... you there, Sultan. We'll come on to the interoperability because I want to get Joanne's point of view. But what I'm understanding from you is, OK, you need to actually have work with lots of different, you know, um, customers because they all have different needs. They all have different ways they're going to spend the money. They all make a business case potentially differently before you can scale. So I want to come to you, Joanne, because um, obviously, you've looked at a lot of telecoms operators. You know, do you also think that, you know, in other places that you've seen, that it really does have to be this like one customer at a time before you can scale up, or do you think that there are particular areas where telcos may be able to, you know, build a scaled business in healthcare more quickly? I think this is actually a strong capability of the telcos that they can bring to the healthcare is the ability to work with small numbers of customers while also having an architectural vision towards what they're aiming for in the future. Um, so when you talk about, you know, the, the the future ready infrastructure, this is what Telco has as its DNA. And I think that's really good. Where we where we need to evolve um, is the uh, ability to communicate with 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 the health sector in this case, understanding their requirements. Um, co-creation like Sultan mentioned um, so that we remove the complexity of expectations of them to understand connectivity that's our game that's our bag 
um, they're, they've got, you know, health systems to run and they don't expect to be uh, necessarily even educated on it. It's, it's our responsibility as a community to go in there, hide that complexity, understand the requirements and design the um, uh, future fit connectivity as, as a service for them into the future. So that means going beyond what we do today generally speaking as a community we're seeing early signs of it but we're not there yet we're not there culturally we're not there organizationally we have the skills we do have the skills um, and we have the capabilities so i think there's more for us to do to kind of wrap our arms further around what we what we deliver we tend to even the fact that we're calling this 5g we tend to make it about the technology it's not about the technology it's about what it can make the um what it, the value it can deliver to you know the other side in this case the health services and systems um yeah. and i completely agree with the interoperability and data governance and potential there i think we have as a community the skills and capabilities but we need to go further with regards to how we essentially sell how we go to market how we communicate yeah. that's what has to change first mm. So, Alcino, I know you have a number of solutions, you know, already in the market that are delivering outcomes for your customers in the healthcare space. Could you tell us about a couple of them? And, you know, Joanne is talking about, you know, we need to measure the the outcome for the customer. Is that also, you know, how you measure the success of your, your solutions? Are you able to elaborate on that a little bit based on your experience? Yeah, okay. So, um, the, there are basically three commercial solutions today. Uh, one is in, uh, uh, an end-to-end -end service for the NHS in Portugal. Mm -hmm. It is a specialized call center accessed via telephone line or web, avoiding travel to a health center or hospital. Uh, it is powered by a digital assistant for natural language interaction and two different types of service are provided, clinical, uh, and administrative uh, the clinical services uh, are provided by health professionals mm -hmm. uh, and the, the services are like screening, counseling and referral for acute non-emergent diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is for advice on non-prescription medication and clinical and public health information. Of course, non-clinical services are administrative and information services like scheduling appointments in, in primary health care, among many others. The, 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 the two other solutions are common, the uh, telemed telemedicine collaborative platform uh, for healthcare professionals, meaning uh, doctors, uh, or you can have a real-time diagnosis uh, uh, between a remote uh, health center and a, a central hospital, for example, and uh, data sharing and image real-time manipulation. And uh, the, the, the last one is the, the, the assisted living or remote monitoring uh, platform for management of daily tasks related to health, well-being and safety, but also for medical devices uh, to be uh, used at home, for example. But regarding uh, new, new uh, technology that we are exploring, uh, we are, for example, exploring Wi-Fi sensing for assisted living. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so this is the uh, way that Wi-Fi detects uh, movements, um, a presence, uh, or for healthcare could be a, yeah. could be a good solution. And the other one, it's uh, big data and uh, machine learning for support on eye diseases diagnosis. This is a real case. We are working with the eye, uh, uh, let's say, center. Uh, the aim is to detect early symptoms that can lead to blindness. Uh, like cataracts, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, and diabetic right, retino, retinopathy. Mm. Uh, so this is a well. It's a, a, a kind of algorithms to help the the the, the specialists to uh, provide a, a better diagnosis. Let's say, yeah. and uh, the last but not the least is explore ga gamification as an engagement technique to encourage chronic, chronic uh, patients to perform their uh, daily tasks. Uh, mm. are the, let's say what we are do, doing commercially and exploring. Yeah. And, and in terms of the, the, the more established ones, like, you know, the collaboration platform um, uh, for, for healthcare providers, you know, are you able to 
measure or the impact that it's having on the actual healthcare yes. providers? You yes. know, this is saving them uh, X many of hours or... Yeah, um, I can't, this is very straightforward because, uh, you know, uh, it's being used between uh, central hospitals in Portugal, for example, and yeah. uh, hospitals in Africa. So okay. uh, instead of uh, uh, traveling, uh, bringing uh, people to Portugal uh, for uh, being uh, diagnosed, they can they can be a, at distance. So it's uh, it's okay. just a, a count of uh, of euros that uh, have been being saved by the national health system that is supporting this uh, this cost okay. for uh, the Portuguese speaking uh, countries, for example. So it's it's very straightforward. And even in Portugal, uh, we have several uh, central hospitals that are connected to remote uh, hospitals that don't have all the, the, special, uh, the specialities. Yeah. And uh, we can have one, uh, well, avoiding traveling again, uh, avoiding uh, having duplicate, duplication of uh, specialists uh, through all the central and, re and remote hospitals. So it's very simple to, to, yeah. to account for, for, for the value that we can bring. Good, good. I mean, and just one last question on this. I'm, I, you know, it's a curveball, so I don't know how well you'll be, or you know, whether you're able to answer it. But, you know, I'm curious to know a lot of the, a lot of the challenges that I hear from telecoms operators is it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to understand the business model. How do you sell to somebody? How do you sell to a health service that is already financially stretched? Yeah. Um, that you sell them a new technology, how can you prove it's going to, you know, how does that, that business case work? So I don't know if you're able to share anything about no, what can, the, the business share. model oh, is like. Yeah. I can share. For the call center, it's based on a, a, a call that, uh, that is uh, collected. So mm -hmm. for call, there's, a, there's, a, uh, there's money. And for the, this collaborative platform, uh, we, we are selling uh, licenses. So it's a kind of like selling an ERP or something else. It's uh, okay. just a kind of software that we are that we are selling. Okay, so it's not like anything really complex in terms of like no, guaranteed no, of results. Okay, no, great. Well, good. you know, it's helpful to know. It's helpful to know. So we've only got a, a couple of minutes left, and and I'd really you know like to dive in to understand, um, you know what what the role of telecoms operators should look like in the healthcare space in, in five years time. So I don't know, maybe Joanne, we'll start, start with you. And I'd like to, you know, maybe, I, I think there's probably not just one role, but I think if you could highlight, you know, maybe what you think the biggest difference that telecoms operators can make and specifically, you know, like what, what solutions should they bring to market in order to achieve that? Or, you know, who should they partner with in order to, to achieve, you know, where we want them to be in five years time? Sure. Okay, very good. Um, so I think they, have, they must deliver on connectivity. They cannot go beyond connectivity without delivering the right connectivity at the right time every time to meet the healthcare needs. So that's a concept that we call connectivity as a service at TM Forum. It's still, it's still just uh, evolving, but it's really about taking the intent requirements from um, from a from an enterprise customer in this case a health 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 uh, community and delivering the right connectivity every time. So having that assurance with what will having that assurance and building from that position of trust is what will allow them to go beyond connectivity to do other things. Um, uh, Alicio, uh, Alicio Alicio mentioned the power of data, and I truly believe the power of data is what will um, accelerate the digital transformation of the healthcare sector. So having the right information to improve uh, clinical decision making, to reduce risks, um, to breaking down the silos of data from different sources, applying uh, artificial intelligence to that data. Telecommunications operators that are coming from a position of luxury and that they have, we have had models inside inside our industry for many, many years. So many of our data models are, are at least somewhat harmonized and it allows for ease of partnering. That ability, bringing that experience to the healthcare sector to help improve the interoperability of data, I do believe is a, is a function that they can, they can bring, uh, which goes beyond the connectivity services. So that, that 
data interoperability, enabling the end-to-end -end flow of data, um, data governance, security, privacy. These are all core capabilities of the telecommunications providers. And it's not the core capabilities of the health systems. They want that done with a trusted partner. And I believe these are the areas that um, we can certainly pro pro provide really high value uh, improvements. And really what you want to get to is that partnered relationship. So yes, you can have a transactional relationship. I deliver software and get paid that, but you're really ultimately looking for a long-term partner relationship um, with the health community so that you can build your, build your business upon that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the data operability is interesting. I wish we had more time to go into more detail on that one, but I, we don't. So I'll see you now, uh, just quickly while we wrap up, it'd be great to understand, you know, what success will look like for you, for Altice in five years in the healthcare space. What would you like to achieve there? Well, I'll be uh, very straightforward on this. I hope we can have a tenfold increase in revenues and this will be the KPI to know if we succeed. succeed. Of course, there is uh, much to do in the meanwhile from getting competencies about technologies and learning yeah. the specific language of this sector. It's not just like selling uh, phones or selling connectivity. It's completely different. Yeah. And finding the right partners and the best solutions of, uh, uh, as well. It's not just... Uh, I, I, I told you that we are selling as a transactional, but uh, this requires, as Joan said, a collaboration, co-creation and so on. So we, we, we need to be... Uh, to understand the right challenges and to partner with the specific, like we are doing with the, this ICE uh, Medical Center and, and, and many others, uh, to understand the, the, the challenges and to build solution based on, the, on that. So um, I think this, this would be, uh, let's say, the, 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 the proof that we succeed or not. Of course, we are a company, so we need revenues. And uh, at the final, it will be the revenues that will come. But uh, we need to, to build this uh, trust with the, with the partners and, and to leverage yeah. on the, the, the capacities we have for in computing power, systems integration, and network capillarity, of course. Great. Well, I wish you all the success in uh, those $10 million and many, many more benefits to the patients and doctors you're working with. Thanks very much both for your thoughts today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy and the panelists. Great job. Thank you.